Hello. Okay, so we're into section four. Four of cardiovascular three. 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 Section three. Three, sorry. Section three of cardiovascular disease. And this section is going to be on peripheral vascular disease. So I'll be looking at what it is and what the knock on consequences of it is. So PVD or peripheral vascular disease, it kind of is what it, it does what it says in the tent. It's when it's not in the kind of main things like your brain and your heart, it's in your peripheral, so in like your legs and your fingertips and your toes and these kind of things. Um, but it's basically it's a term giving to any narrowing of, of arteries that are not your heart and your brain so as soon as it's out with of those things it is pvd that we're talking about uh, and again generally speaking atherosclerosis is the cause of this disease as it is for all of the heart things so this is a condition because it doesn't directly affect like your heart or brain and any of the really very key organs it can go for a while without actually being detected so you could have this for a considerable length of time without actually knowing it without seeing any kind of real symptoms of it and any kind of real issues of it that doesn't mean it's not going to be bad ultimately but it means that you can go a bit longer with this compared to that of that might cause myocardial infarction which you want to deal with quickly it tends to be found in people who quite often when they exercise they get like deep pain in their legs is that that can often be a symptom of having uh, peripheral vascular disease. Uh, so the symptoms might present as cramp or pain in the legs or sometimes more rarely in the arms during exercise because oxygen struggles to be delivered to those muscles and because of lack of oxygen the idea is you're going to get interesting symptoms like pain to say something's wrong here. The pain might fade uh, a couple of minutes after ending exercise because the idea is eventually the oxygen supply is enough for the amount that those muscles are moving and so the pain goes away. Uh, but if a more major artery or vein is blocked, you might get more pain and visible tissue damage. Like if you remember the thrombosis video that we had in our last one, the picture of the leg with the black section down it, that can occur as a result of peripheral vascular disease. So a deep, th deep vein thrombosis, this is a specific type of a peripheral vascular disease. This is one that... Uh, it's quite a common one. It's quite one that comes up quite a lot. And it's the idea is that it is when a thrombus occurs really deep in your kind of main vein down your, your femur, essentially. Um, so it's when that one that gets blocked. Um, and obviously, it again, as soon as it's blocked, stops it getting oxygen, stops it getting all the various nutrients to survive. Um, a quite common thing of it is people tend to know if they've been flying and sitting down for a long period of time because on the plane obviously you can't really get up and move that's why if you're going on like a 10 hour flight it's sensible to get up and down and walk a wee bit because if you're sitting statically for all that time the chances of your blood maybe stopping moving and forming a clot is much much higher because you're not moving so your blood is not necessarily moving as quickly which means this is much more likely to happen this clot is much more likely to form because you haven't been moving it's also the reason why they give you compression socks because remember this idea of venous return of your blood so vein the veins return blood by squeezing muscle tissues and so if you're again sitting really really still uh, you're not going to be squeezing your muscle tissues to squeeze blood up your veins and again remember blood that sits still clots and that's what we're trying to avoid here so even perfectly healthy people it can happen again now problems of dvt deep vein thrombosis and um, because the blood doesn't come up the legs as efficiently you can get fluid build up remember how the veins take the uh, take the tissue fluid back in from the tissues um, if the veins are filled or blocked they're not going to take that fluid back in and so you get a fluid build up inside the tissue space because there's no room for the tissue fluid to come back into your lymph system can still take some of that burden but not all of it okay so as you get this edema which is known as fluid buildup and that can cause in the legs and that causes very painful swelling it's extremely sore a more pressing threat to life however uh, is the risk of the thrombosis the deep vein thrombosis breaking up so remember it can sometimes the clot can break apart and that can form an embolus that might travel to the heart and then get stuck in the lungs if we think of the steps of the root of the heart we're going from the legs up to the vena cava then vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery. Okay, so that's the route that the embolus would take. It would take that exact route, end up in the pulmonary artery, and then the pulmonary artery would branch, 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 branch into a smaller one, and eventually you'd end up with effectively a clot in your pulmonary artery in your lungs. Now that is called a pulmonary embolism. So pulmonary embolism, as it's just been described, is blood clot in the arteries of the lungs. So again, major impact on 
oxygen intake and it will restrict the oxygen that your blood can get because your lungs are being blocked. Um, there's two things that we recommend you do. It is in the sway. You can follow the links in the sway. Um, it's just simply Googling. Um, Paul Robinson is a footballer who has had this and you can read a bit about his story. Secondly, there's this video. The link is also in the sway. Uh, you will need to log into YouTube to watch it though because it's age restricted because it's really, really gory. Oh, it's amazing though. It's horrible it's but brilliant at the same video. time. It's my favourite video ever. Uh, would recommend it, but if you're squeamish, just don't oh, yeah, bother. No, no. If you don't like blood, you will faint, so don't watch it. <laughs> but yes, it's, it's amazing. The biggest embolus ever getting removed. Okay, so for, this is all you need to know about peripheral vascular disease. You just need to know what it is. So it's the narrowing of blood vessels that are not in the heart and brain. You need to know about deep vein thrombosis, which is when a blood clot, also known as a thrombus, is occurs in a vein, again, not to do with the heart or the brain, so usually the leg is where this example is talked about. Okay, you need to effectively use that word embolus. So remember, an embolus is a travelling blood clot, so it's not one that's stuck in a place. It's a it's one that's travelling, going to block some other location somewhere else. Uh, and you need to know a pulmonary, a pulmonary embolism, which has resulted as... Uh, an embolus that's broken off of a, a thrombus from deep vein thrombosis and now travelled into the arteries and the lungs, causing a clot there. Okay, so that's it as far as peripheral vascular diseases disease goes. Video four, section four, is on cholesterol and its impact on cardiovascular disease. So we will see you then.